Shalom and be one. This is the keys from the Black Narrative, of course. And we're going to be doing a new segment called Akis Rants. And on this segment, we're going to be able to kind of discuss different topics that we wouldn't usually be able to delve into uh, to the fidelity that, should, that they should be kind of dealt with on the, uh, the black narrative. Yet they're still relevant to the black community. So I, I do think they are still very important to touch on. And the first topic that we're going to get into uh, today is the whole phenomenon of anti-blackness, not only in the black community, because I mean, that's 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 yesterday's paper, but anti-blackness even within the black movement, which is, I mean, it, it's it's really ass backwards, but hey like it's 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 happening and it's been progressively getting worse within the last year now to speak on the origins of anti-blackness when you look throughout the black community oftentimes you see this extreme and for inferiority complex that we kind of grow up with from a young age and of course this comes from various forms of white supremacist programming you know beauty standards growing up you you know seeing white dolls and uh, whiteness being promoted in all these different ways and us being portrayed as servants or slaves all these different things it's a whole uh case study within itself but uh, as a result of that you see a lot of uh, a lot of our people are trying to kind of cut the cord from the rest of diaspora, uh, whether that means cutting ties with your blackness overall, or trying to quote unquote redefine blackness, or even when it comes to trying to cause a goal for separation between uh, being black and uh, an African ancestry or an African history. And some people might think, oh, well, that's pretty rich coming from a Hebrew Israelite. But the thing about it is I disagree with a lot of Hebrews that try to use being a Hebrew Israelite to separate us from our blackness or our connection to the African continent. And I believe that notion is very uh, misinformed. And it's just another manifestation of how we will learn certain things about our identity and try to use those things and not explore the nuances or kind of uh, discover our connection to Africa or, or the old world overall, but use these different identities to say, OK, cool, well, I'm happy because I don't have to identify with these groups of black people in these different places at all because I was, you know, I, I'm not, you know, not me personally, but, you know, somebody that thinks like this, I have, I'm under the notion that black people from these other places are inferior. And so I don't want to be that since white supremacy has taught me that blackness is inferior. I want to separate myself from that and adopt a new identity. And uh, one way that a lot of black folk do this historically, and if, if you do this, God, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're cooning. But we gonna break that down too. But the way a lot of uh, black people do it is nationality. That's one way the black folk do it. And you'll see, you know, somebody jet black. I'm talking about look like night and they'll come to you speaking Spanish and you you look at them. You're like, man, you OK, you you brother. Oh, no, I'm Dominican. What you talking about, man? You Dominican. How, how you think? How you think the, the, the Spaniards look at you? You know, but or even you will have ignorant black folk in, you know, other parts of the Caribbean or Africa, even say that oh well you know i'm not black i'm jamaica or i'm not black i'm this and i've even had people telling me growing up that 
you know, because I'm of Jamaican ancestry, I ain't black. And I would look at them and be like, man, you just about as dumb as a rock because I'm like, literally, there's no difference. But that conception, this it just goes to show how ignorant we are of history and context and of the transatlantic slave trade. Some as basic as a transatlantic slave trade here in the U.S. because it's not taught, it's not delved into within these different places and uh, uh, you're noticing a rise of nationality being used in the black community to divide us from other people from other nations within the diaspora and nationality isn't uh, an accurate way to measure blackness first off because you're under a flag that was established by white supremacists Let's, let's let's be quite frank with that first off and second off nationality it doesn't denote any sort of uh, value system or anything like that when it comes to the black community I'm going to be quite frank because you'll have certain people that will say oh because you know my ancestors are black Americans or my ancestors are Jamaican or my ancestors are, are from Nigeria. We have this certain code and this certain that and this certain this. When, to be quite frank, I could go into any one of those countries and find dirty laundry uh, on the, the culture and the history and, and any of that. Because at the end of the day, we have... Uh, a majority, and I'm going to keep saying this, a majority of black people are coons. That's just a majority. Like the people that are really going to ride out for the black cause are few and far between. I'm going to be quite frank with you because we don't like to follow a cause. We like to follow a leader. And even um, another example, a manifestation of the wanting to completely disconnect from uh black history and from africa is the whole notion of uh being native american and i've heard this notion and i remember when i first came across it i, I just thought it was preposterous i was like, oh, this is just some fringe you know thing that's uh, going on and that's not and, and and i'm not saying this to say that there weren't black people that have had interactions with the americas uh, you know, like, I mean, we could go into the history of that, you know, but uh, uh, Africa has been very navally uh, uh, inept, not inept, what's the word, what's the opposite of that? Um, they've been very naval, uh, navally capable for thousands of years. And when I say thousands of years, I'm talking since the time of the Egyptians. They were one of the first peoples to ever, I mean, I think the first peoples to actually have boats, you know, river systems and all that and there's a current that connects africa to south america so you know i truly do believe that there was trade but that's not to say that your black ass is uh, uh connected to the native americans <laughs> to be quite frank you know and uh another thing to consider is why is it if you believe that you're native american right that the blacks of the, the continental U.S., all 50 states are descended from Native Americans, then why is it that other blacks in the West wouldn't be descended from Native Americans as well? So it's multiple problems with that notion. And it goes to show the historical ignorance in saying something like that. And I remember I was having a conversation with somebody and they brought up the whole point of like, you know, uh, like I've been doing research and you know research in our community you know means you know I, I was watching some YouTube videos so I was doing some research and it just makes so much sense that you know that black people here are the descendants of Native Americans and we're the true natives I mean like where's the ships how would they be able to bring all those people over to and I said to him well I mean First off, the ships would have wouldn't be around. Like if if you have whole entire metal ships 
that are rusting and covered in barnacles and 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 falling apart because the the sea is is literally a, a, a vat of salted water that dissolves things that's that's what salt <laughs> that's what it does it dissolves the the sea is very destructive you have barnacles you got all these different things that dissolve at the metal why do, what do you think it would do to wooden ships <laughs> you know like that's that's not how seafaring works so that notion of where's the ships where's the ships when if you say something like that you don't know how how, how you don't know anything about seafaring and if you talk to anybody that is a fisherman or or works on boats or it works at a boat yard <laughs> you'll find out really fast where those boats went and uh, uh another thing is they were very capable of carrying large quantities of anything people overall because that's what people did for thousands of years trade was done through boats and it wasn't just one boat they would have brigades of whole entire ships bringing a bunch of people or product or what have you over the seas so it is very much not not possible it that's what happened multiple people were brought over during the slave trade and i i, I told this person i was like well you got to consider too that the phenotypes are completely different when it comes to hair you have different forms of texture right ranging from one like i, th I think it's texture one all the way to four c and i asked them okay well why is it that you look at all native groups in uh the west and they all have the uh, 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 one one hair you know one textured hair i mean completely straight as an arrow which is a very rare and not rare but it's a hair type that's associated with the the far east it's not a very common hair type like most white folk don't even have one hair type because like usually if they grow their hair out long enough it starts to wave so why is it they have a hair type that is completely straight and our hair is the kinkiest hair that you can find on the planet those are two completely different phenotypes so how'd that happen and that person they have no answer for me but these different things that we do to try to disconnect from blackness is is i mean just it, it's it's really insane and it's funny because you have this translating into hate for other black groups and you know people will bring up well you know this group did that and this group did this and this group did that and the thing about it is that's just here, here here's the kicker when it comes to that you'll have people that are talking like that about oh well this group of black folk been doing this and this group of black folk historically did this and to me that's just an excuse for you the cuddling closer with white daddy and the white society because there always has to be an in and the way you get in with white society is you got to put the rest you got to put your blackness aside and you got to put the rest of uh, the, the diaspora or, or of your people aside with that and so there's different forms of that when people when, when, when y'all talk about the immigrants coming over to the u.s they don't identify as black they identify as whatever nationality they, they they're coming from and so that allows them to be able to come over to the country and say well i'm not black i'm this nationality and so that allows them to have an in to integrate with white society and there's multiple examples of people i mean for, for instance this whole notion that we don't gotta fight white supremacy and that we're gonna you know kick out other that, that that black immigrants are the problem and not white supremacy now i'm definitely not saying that 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 there ain't no problem with black immigrants because i mean they they they, they bring in coons 
but for it to be the main thing that that black folk are fighting over it's 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 it, it, you're 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 straining at a at a gnat and swallowing a camel when you get to that point because it allows you to let it let out your your inner anti-blackness because you've found a new identity as a, a, a black from this nation and you're able to take that internal anti-blackness and say that oh well really I'm just being pro-black by defending my defending the black people from my nation and that's what other black folk from different nations coons have been doing for hundreds of years and it's interesting because the point of anti-blackness starts to come up and people have been bringing up how you know they're concerned with anti-blackness and particularly anti-blackness against black americans but i'm noticing within the the and ain't nothing wrong with being proud of you know where you're from or what have you but i've been noticing within the b1 movement now you have these uh you have black folk that are on both sides but particularly within the the secure the tribe kind of mindset that side of things when i say secure the tribe i mean people that are saying now nah, we we should black americans need to just keep the black americans and exclude everybody that side that 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 would speak on anti-blackness and tribalism if you are black and you speak about being against other blacks that makes you anti-black and anti-blackness when you are talking within the context of the black community that's just called tribalism so we're starting to perpetuate the same problems that have gotten us caught up and behind for hundreds of years it's starting to become the norm now it's starting to become uh become a form of pro-blackness to be anti anti-black because you want to just preserve your nationality above your blackness and that's something that's got to stop we gotta we gotta we gotta change that mindset but hey look i i i I ain't here to tell you what to do or what to think but this is just to put another perspective or bit of food for thought when it comes to that uh sort of rise of uh that mindset and where it might come from So just be observant, stay vigilant, and catch you in the next one.